Hello again and welcome back Guardians, Mango Sun here bringing you a TLDR related to the patch notes of the TWABs and the Bungie blog posts that have been happening throughout the month of February leading up to light fall, right? This isn't going to include the recent TWAB TLDR that will happen on February the 23rd. So just to catch you guys up to speed, I'm going to be going over the things that are important that I deem important to the uh, casual and non-casual player base. This is going to include some changes to subclasses, some strand updates, some exotic updates, and things to look out for when going into the Lightfall campaign. Now let's go ahead and get started. Now, the TLDR is that the Lightfall campaign skip, right? So there will be a Lightfall campaign skip only if you play a main character. Like if you play three characters, right, you get to the soft cap, whatever the soft cap may be, and on your subsequent characters, you will be able to skip the Lightfall campaign, but you will not be able to get the rewards that are associated with completing the Lightfall campaign on Legendary Mode in its entirety, because you still would have to complete each individual level with that character to get the rewards associated with that. Now, on February the 27th, right, the 27th, that is the day before Lightfall drops on the 28th, so that's going to be a Monday. So on Monday, February 27th at 9 a.m. PST, that's Pacific Time Standard, that Destiny 2 will be offline until February the 28th at 9 a.m. If you are a PlayStation 5 user, then you will need 80 gigabytes worth of free space in order to download this update. The older assets of Destiny 2 will be deleted and everything will be updated in the game so have that available space ready to download the 27th to the 28th is to give you time to clear out your system and update the game prior to the game launching on the 28th now will there be a small day one patch there probably could be so get the 80 gigabyte update out of the way and go into the small little day one patch on top of that because you know playstation likes to install things and then copy it and then upload it and then install it so give yourself some time to get that all situated for lightfalls drop now if you aren't familiar with some of the keywords for strand I'm gonna go over a few so we have suspend unravel and sever now the suspend unravel and sever are like our cold and our freeze and our scorch and ignition and cure and restoration these are all verbs that will be working within the strand subclasses and just to give you a little bit of an idea of what those things entail it is a trigger to activate something to end up doing another thing so you will sever an enemy and then you'll unravel him and then like you'll suspend the enemies unravel him and then sever him like it did it's just the whole the way that that all pans out together now again if you are watching this as a youtube video the things on the back of the screen are going to end up looping until the end of the tldr so they're on the screen for about 30 seconds 35 seconds uh so uh try not to read it too fast because they're not on the screen for too long now in season 21 right so we are in season 19 right now in season 21 we will have deep sight activation now this will be a big thing the the thing with the deep side activation is is you get a red border right you 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 get a gun that has the potential to get a red border uh, smite of yasmin um the forbearance things like that raid weapons new things that come into the game um the battler bxr gun right if you haven't completed all these patterns but you have subsequent copies of these things that didn't drop with red borders in season 21 you'll be able to take that piece of gear that that gun that weapon that has a pattern activate deep sight on it and then extract a pattern from there so what does this mean for those for right now because we're in going into season 20 to 21 so 21 is somewhere down the line in the summer so in the summertime, so what you want to do is you want to try to stock up as much of the things that you kind of don't 
have the red borders for the ones that are harder to achieve that's mostly the raid weapons uh, some of the dungeon weapons and they just don't have the allocated drops like you need you can only run the raid so many times and get a guaranteed red border so many times so if you acquire one smite of moraine and then you end up running the dungeon on your subsequent characters and you end up getting drops of smite of moraine but they're not dropping at red borders then you can store those in your vault wait till the summertime comes activate deep side on there and then get those patterns extracted so that you have access to those weapons when you want because it's going to take you an extremely long time to craft every single one of these dungeon and raid allocated patterns but if you have a stockpile of them then you'll be able to activate the deep side on them extract the pattern and then get your collection complete for your craftable weapons now this will potentially work with the ones that you are doing now in the current time frame if you don't have time to get all the red borders for the season the Ikelos weapons the seraph weapons the plunder weapons the nightmare weapons you can stockpile them sit them in the vault wait till season 21 activate deep sight on them you will not be able to activate a deep sight on a singular weapon multiple times so whatever that weapon did the pattern on you extract the pattern from that weapon you won't be able to reactivate it on that same weapon and then take it off i know i'm spending a lot of time on this but this is an important key feature coming up later in the year and you're gonna you're gonna be like wow i can't believe i didn't know this i could have done this got carried in a raid or in a dungeon or something like that stockpiled these weapons that i didn't think were good and then you know how bungie does they go back into the past and then they update some stuff and then some of the older stuff becomes metal with the newer stuff and that's just how the game evolves now upcoming now is the season of defiance the season of defiance is going to play in on par at the same time in unison whatever you want to say it's going to play at the exact same time as lightfall drops lightfall is the campaign boom season of the defiance is what we will be in so season of defiance will have the season of defiance weapons season of defiance will last for the 90 days that it does last until season of the deep comes out and that is season 21 that is the season with the deep sight resonance and the focusing and the activations of the deep sight weapons coming up in season 21 during the summertime now quick little glance over but pvp is getting some updates pve is also getting a refresh once again so you'll have some of the older strikes updated and the enemies and the spawn points and uh, the length of the of the strikes will be getting updated as well um, and with those updates will come battlegrounds and some seraph operation battlegrounds some war mine operational battlegrounds that will also get updated and imported into the strikes battleground playlist in order to give you a more variety of different things now the majority of the year in my opinion will possibly be spent on making pvp great again now the pvp community has not had some new maps in quite some time and if we compare apples to oranges that PvE is in a really good spot, but also PvP is uh, kind of running on fumes at the moment. It's had some updates to its loot pool system, it's, it's had a few updates in its uh, overall uh, in game PvP type of situation, such as the Iron Banner, the Trials of Osiris, the competitive mode, the freelance playlist, all those things were probably big projects at the beginning and then just adding in the newer maps and knocking rift down to three people for the competitive mode because six people in rift is just an absolute mess and just testing out new things with the iron banner and getting that whole control thing down testing to see how certain supers go along with certain things within the game uh it's, it's all we're all a big testing ground for bungie pushing it pushing the envelope for the next thing now loadouts are going to be coming into the game lfg is going to be coming into the game but that is uh, to be dropped in season 20, 
uh, season 22. So right now we have information up to season of the deep, season 21. Season 22 is when LFG is supposed to be dropping in the game. So that is look for group. That's what LFG stands for. Currently using LFG, you'll have to go to the Destiny Companion app. You'd have to go to LFG Finder. You'd have to go to Gamer Link or something like that. You'd have to go to Astro Cross's Discord page and go find an LFG group. But coming in season 22, a uh, looking for group is going to be added within the game it's going to be perfect probably not uh so still use the lfg finders that you are using now until uh later after coming to towards the end of summer lfg is going to be active now going back to loadouts loadouts are coming into the game and uh, i want to say starting off there's going to be about 10 loadouts you can save within the game so for that character not not per not per account if i'm not mistaken so it is 10 loadouts per character so 30 loadouts if you run three characters but 10 if you run a singular character now can you still use dim yes can you still use destiny loadouts you can you can use all those other subsequent things that you are still currently using to store your loadouts but this will make it an in-game feature so that you can quickly switch between builds as quickly as switch between a gun so Destiny item manager and Destiny loadouts happen pretty fast and they happen off screen, right? They happen not within the, the game itself and they, they, they do change pretty fast. But you have to go to orbit or be standing in the tower or the helm or something in order to get those things activated. So using a loadout system in the game is actually going to be uh, a lot more clean a lot more simpler for those what i want to what i want to say is going to be like some core loadouts for things that you're going to want to run so this is my competitive loadout this is my pvp loadout this is my dungeon loadout this is my uh, raid loadout this is my arc loadout you know so on and so forth but i would say on the game keep your 10 best builds that you will like to be switching back and forth between two uh, especially like something for the solar class with all the updates that are coming you may want to run an ignition build or if you're playing with more of a group you may want to run a cure build so you may want to run two different variants of that given the type of exotics that you use now let's wrap this whole thing up because this video is getting uh, uh kind of long right tldr but this is going on for about 15 minutes so uh, roaming supers are generating seven orbs of power instead of five. Currently, they they make five. Now they will be making seven. Now um, most people don't care how many orbs they make for their teammates, but I will say in in-game activities and in PvP is is it's kind of a big deal. So roaming supers will be seen more, and one-shot supers will be seen probably a little bit less, right? So unless you like Chaos Reach, you will probably be using Tickle Fingers in PvP because it'll kill more people and generate more orbs versus you risking yourself with using the Command Mail Wave trying to hit a whole bunch of people when it's only going to generate a small amount of orbage based off of the one, two people that you do kill with it. Uh, Hammer of Soul, Daybreak, and Spectral Blades are having their base cooldowns reduced to 9 minutes and 16 seconds, down from 10 minutes and 25 seconds. So I run Hammer of Soul uh, at that 10 minute and 25 seconds, and my intellect isn't uh, too high, it's not maxed out, but it's my Hammer of Soul is usually sitting at about 8 minutes and 26 seconds for cooldown. Uh, given the orbs of power and stuff that I generate with that, I can get my super in roughly around four minutes. So with it being knocked down a whole, I don't know, minute and 15 seconds, minute and 14 seconds, whatever, you will see Spectral Blades, Hammer of Soul, Daybreak, uh, a lot more in PvP, and you'll probably see a lot more in PvE, uh, given the fact that Daybreak will now have the, uh, the Phoenix Dive uh, fire effect do 220 damage uh, base of guardians right so guardians only have 200 health so it does one shot so you'll be able to continuously spam that and hammer of soul well hammers are always good so now when someone activates the hammers that clinching effect that you have in your body on the other side when you hear it will come back because you will hear a lot more hammers happening a lot more or you'll be getting mad at hunters all over again when they do end up disappearing and slicing you to death with spectral blades because the dr the damage resistance in the game uh, hasn't changed for uh the most part i want to say it's going from 
a, a, a big damage resistance to a slightly less damage resistance. I want to say, I think they knocked it down for about 20%. You're going to be seeing less bubbles because bubbles lost 4,600 points of health to the bubbles and more things do damage to it. So uh, I will have upcoming videos that will show how to utilize the bubble better instead of how the bubble is used now. The bubble is used now is I can hold this point down because I am safe. Now, when you pop the bubble, you will be a target. Uh, there's multiple instances in Crucible you probably have seen where you will hear a bubble pop and then you will hear a thunder crash shortly after, right? So the thunder and then the lightning. So to put that all in perspective, Daybreak um, is getting its update. It's, you're going to be able to do more with it, right? It's uh, Daybreak... Uh, Daybreak took a blue chew pill, right? It's going to be able to last longer. You're going to get more strokes with this blade. You're going to get a, anywhere between three to four more strokes with this blade. So you're going to be able to stand the fight longer. You're going to be able to last longer. And that's what Daybreak was missing with it being such a um, roaming solar super type of swing the sword, hit the flame, travels across the ground, thermite grenades, explosions everywhere. But... It wasn't being used at all. Everyone's like, if you're on a Warlock, you're using Starfire Protocol, you're using Fusion Grenades, Empowering Rift, and a Whale. And if you were using Daybreak, you would probably kick from the Pirate Team. So, Daybreak is going to get a big significant update. So, look out for Daybreak Supers in PvP and in PvE. Now, Thunder Crash got a little bit of nerf, but it's still good. A little bit of its, uh, little bit of its time has been nerfed on the flight patterns so you can't see me but i'm making a an aerial motion um as i describe this so that's that's crazy so each subclass has its own things to pick up now right so they got rid of these wells they got rid of the war mine cells and all this stuff. they consolidated a lot of things uh war mine cells got turned into strand and uh, they're not this you're not going to be able to activate war mine stuff and then strand abilities but anyway so strand took the place of war mine cells solar abilities solar will make fire sprites arc will make its traces void will make breaches stasis will make shards and strand and its tangles right fire sprites will synergize with all solar verbs and specializations that it does now but it's specific it's, it's specific in grenade energy void breaches specialized in class ability right arc traces remain the same they grant you a minor boost to all abilities a little, little 10 percent little boost there stasis remains the same as a melee based thing and strand is going to be able to ramp up your ability gains while while it grants you this period of exhaustion so as you do more strand things your abilities will come back a lot faster but eventually you get to a point to where your guardian is exhausted and your ability cooldowns will significantly drop so that's why most of the strand stuff that you've seen it's got like oh man you get plus 10 resilience here 10 mobility here 10 discipline here because it wants you to have high gains for getting this your abilities back but once you reach a point of exhaustion with your character those gains will be heavily diminished so uh, whatever you got going on now it will be ramped down to a low 50 percent on that exhaustion so you won't be doing as much later on your 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 speedy gonzalez at the beginning but by the end you're wily e. coyote you're you're just the target right because you can't fight back because you have no abilities to fight back with while well, everybody else is on a steady uh even playing field on how their abilities regen and come back to them and that ladies and gentlemen is going to wrap up the tldr right so instead of watching all those other lengthy twab videos out there you can uh refer to my tldr if you do like this type of content if you do like the rundown of the important bits without having to have anything on your screen to constantly be reading and looking into with the youtubers and the editors in the background and just listen to my wonderful voice then go ahead and hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this if you want more wrap-ups of twabs and blog posts in a TLDR form, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.